Hi, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Sorry, guys, we got to do it over the Skype this week. Uh, so uh, we're going to see if this works. Last time we tried this, Jim, the uh, the recording on the other side didn't really work. So hopefully it'll work this time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So uh, another round of free agency kicked off Friday around the NHL uh, with something like 65 players, Jim, signing deals on the first day. That included, like, I don't know, 45 of them with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, like, I, I mean, the thing is, going into it, we heard the Oilers weren't going to be a major player and uh, on the free agent market. And then all of a sudden, don't get me wrong, I mean, there weren't any huge signings or anything, but it was there was a lot of guys signed. What did you think about the Oilers signing? They got real tough. Yeah, real tough. You know, I just, I just keep picturing Ben Eager nailing whichever of the Sedins it was. <laughs> right. And thinking to myself, ooh, this is going to be good. Eager, Hordachuk, Belanger, Barker. And a, a trade for Sutton. I mean, they 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 kind of strengthen their defense a little bit, but they also, like I said, they got very tough up front. And you know that probably spells the end for McIntyre, which is a shame. But yeah, that I think I think they had a plan and they were able to uh, execute it fairly well on the first day. Yeah, no, agreed. Uh, but I mean, I'm just like the Hornichuk one. I had, if. Here's my prediction right now, is that he's not going to play more than 20 games. And, I mean, uh, if he even makes a team at a training camp. So, you know, I just I just don't know. We, we picked up a lot of stuff, and now we're way heavy in forwards, way yeah. heavy, especially on left wing with the acquisition of Ryan Smith. So I'm just I, I'm happy that, that Tambellini made these um, these signings. We needed to firm up our bottom six, and that's, you know, really what, what pushes people over the edge into the playoffs is those bottom six kind of guys. So I'm happy with that. I tell you what, though, Jim, my favorite signing is Belanger. Uh, I think that Belanger signing is going to be just great. Um, third line center, guy who can win faceoffs. You put him out. On the penalty kill in your own zone, a guy can win a faceoff. That's what I like. They had a lot of trouble with that last year. Yeah, exactly. A lot of trouble with the faceoff circle. I'm a little worried about Ben Eager, though. I mean, we've got him for three years now, but I'm I'm a little worried about his um, how do we put it? Impulse control issues. Uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know, you need someone to just be crazy every now and then. Yeah, yeah, no, just absolutely. Something crazy every now and then keep people on their toes. Is there more? Uh, more? Well, exactly. Is there more in the offing for the oil for the next little while? What other options are out there, Jim? Well, it feels like you mentioned that you know we're a little heavy on forwards now. It feels like almost you know maybe maybe that's setting us up for some other movement. And I'd like to see maybe one one more higher end defenseman or yeah. you know something like that. So I think we're at fourteen or so forwards right now. Yeah. So then you know I I could see at least one or two more trades. Uh, going on. What about a big defenseman like Murray from San Jose? Yeah, I like that. It's like seven hundred pounds, <laughs> six foot a hundred. Yeah, that's he's, right. He's one of those guys where you you know you might just chip the puck around him when you're coming down his wing. <laughs> uh, uh, I've I've heard rumors about uh, Green from Washington for a while now. Yeah, I've heard that one never too. Turned that's into anything, but he's only got one year left on a five million dollar or at, at five million dollars. So that that's another one, and. Uh, you know, a, a team who's hurting for players right now is the Winnipeg Jets, and they've got this big defenseman, uh, Bafug, Bafuglian, Bafug, Bafuglian. Can you imagine seeing him with the Oilers? You want to talk about uh, toughness, Jim? We just, you yeah. want, we double our toughness quotient with Dustin Bufflin. And he could be one of these guys that's, you know, well, we all know he can play forward as well, but yeah. you know, messing with other teams' goalies and stuff like that. <laughs> he's he's a very versatile big boy. Yeah, no, I'd, I love I'd it. I'd like to see them try and make a push for him, but, you know, who knows if yeah. he's even available. But I'd like to see one more move to bring in maybe one more kind of tough uh, high-end defenseman. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they signed Laddie Sm Smid again for another couple yeah. of years. And uh, the the one place, though, you're right, is that they're, they're shoring up uh, seems to be that – Everybody says they need to get short, short up on defense, and I think you're right. So let, let's see one more yeah, big guy come in. And, yeah, you're right. Maybe we trade a couple of forwards for him. Maybe we do like a five-for-one uh, <laughs> swap for Dustin Bufflin. That's what I'd like to say. That's right. So uh, another team making major moves is the Florida Panthers, Jim. After trading for Brian Campbell and science Thomas to Kopecky, the Panthers brought in Scotty Upshaw, who I love. Uh, he's great. Uh, remember from Team Canada Juniors, Thomas Fleischman, Ed Jovanovski, who is he still playing? I can't believe that. Yeah. And 
and uh, and uh, Jose Theodore uh, on the first day of free agency. What's going on in Florida? Is it a cap related yeah. thing here, Jim? It is. They, uh, before free agency started, even after the Brian Campbell acquisition, they were at like twenty one million or something. Is that like half the cap floor? Yeah. So they needed to spend big time to you know to get there. I think at, yeah. So at that point, they had like. Six uh, forty something um, million dollars of cap space. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm sure a lot of teams would love to have. You know, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they they really made some moves. A lot of these are kind of big contracts, which I guess you know they had to have done. Yeah, but yeah. but whatever. But uh, Upshaw's a good player. Theodore, I think he's still he he can still be the guy. He's he's uh, a season removed from a couple of thirty win seasons. Like he's he's still good. He just He's been kind of bouncing around a little bit. No, Jovanovski, I think he's still steady on the on the back line. And no, no, absolutely. I thought he might be a guy that would end up somewhere like here, but you know, Florida is a nicer place, and Florida that's where he started. Nice <laughs> but no, I'm interested to see if they're done or if they're you know if they're still. Uh, no, agree. They don't have Volkun anymore. No, they don't. So. Which uh, Volkun signed for 1.5 million in Washington. I thought like. Hopefully we could have got him for three million. That guy—that's a great, great acquisition. Yeah. Well, I, I read somewhere that uh, he was kind of upset that there was no real market for him, so he called up. Uh, he called up the Washington GM and was like, "Hey, like, so one, can we yeah, do this?" Or I'll, I'll work for less. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, we can't get to all the signings, but let's wrap up our free agent talk with uh, a couple of interesting ones. Specifically, Yarmer Yager goes to Philadelphia, uh, same province as Pittsburgh province, uh, coming from Canada, <laughs> state as Pittsburgh. What's going on there, Jim? That was, that was a surprise. It was funny because he came over and his agent and no one knew where he was for like a day and a half. <laughs> right. like, oh, I think he missed a connecting flight or something. <laughs> and then he so pops weird. up in Philadelphia. Like, <laughs> what? Totally. Totally. I guess... They were offering a touch more money or something like that, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Uh, and then uh, Brad Richards goes to the New York Rangers. I mean, we thought he would go either to the Rangers or the Kings, and sure enough, the Rangers paid the price for him. Is he ever? Is he the key missing key to the Rangers, or is he just going to go there and make a big payday and uh, live in Broadway? Yeah, well, I hope I hope he doesn't kind of go the way of a lot of stars that have gone there recently and just kind of tank a little bit, but. I'm just happy that Brad Richards didn't end up in Calgary or Toronto. Yes, agreed, agreed <laughs> completely. Uh, on to the National Basketball Association, or the No Basketball Association, Hello. as it's now known here on 15 Minutes of Fame. They're into a lockout after their uh, collective bargaining agreement expired on Thursday. The two sides very, very far apart. Uh, what are their issues there, Ker- Kersey? Uh, the owners the owners said the players make too much. No, uh, Nothing new there. They want non-guaranteed contracts, though. And yeah, that's, that's weird. something the players, of course, are like. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work out. Yeah. And uh, they they also want a hard salary cap because right now they've got some strange thing where there's a salary cap, but you can just not you can just go over it and yeah. maybe pay a fine or something or <clears throat> Miami Heat, <clears throat> Miami Heat. Yeah, it's something weird like that. Not everyone counts against it, or I I don't know. But the the owners want a hard salary cap. The players once again say. No. Yeah, exactly. They've offered to to have like six hundred million dollars in pay cuts over the next six years. Uh, the owners want it to be more than that. That's crazy. It's a yeah. It's I think it's setting up to be a long, long thing. But you know what I think? The the NBA players should look at the NHL as a good example. The the NHL players took a huge pay cut, as we all remember, and within three years, the league's average salary was bigger than what it was. Exactly. Exactly. And now there's. You know, goalies who aren't even the Vezina winner signing a, a deal that'll pay him ten million dollars this season. So, no, absolutely amazing. So, th- things have gone just as crazy as they were before, because it's always the owner's fault. Yes, it really is. <laughs> you know, they can they can cry and moan, but there's one person signing the checks. Exactly. Uh, how about a uh, little uh, baseball news here? The L.A. Dodgers are in big trouble, Jim. Uh, they filed for bankruptcy last week, blaming the league for rejecting big-money TV deals. Uh, Manny Ramirez is the team's biggest creditor, which is hilarious because he was traded. He's owed $21 million. Uh, and we're going to go right into our first Gabby here, uh, which is a good and bad by you. And we're going to uh, start with the Gabbies 
uh, with the LA Dodgers, even though we just talked about a bad thing here, on the day the team filed for this bankruptcy protection, the players were obviously happy to hear they'd be getting their paychecks. They exploded for 25 hits and a 15 nothing win over the Twins. The Twins just had four hits, Jim. That's the. That, hey, I'd be happy I was getting paid too, I suppose. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm sure Manny Ramirez did something awesome that day too. That's right. <laughs> yeah, good for him. $21 million. I don't even have to play baseball. All right. Yeah. There you done. go. Yeah. Still on the ball, Damon, Jeff. Uh, how about the New York Mets? After going almost two years without a grand slam, they hit two in two innings yeah. in a, a lopsided win over the Tigers, including Canadian Jason Bay's third career grand slam. But wow, the, you, you go a long time without one, then boom, boom. Yeah, and good for them. I mean, it's uh, it's nice to see. The Grand Slam is, of course, one of the most exciting things in baseball, you know, and to have two in a row, I mean, the fans must have been just going insane. I mean, oh, it, yeah. It must have been absolutely so much fun to watch and, and uh, good for them. So uh, we're going all baseball on the good side this week, Jim. The Philadelphia Phillies become the first team uh, to 50 wins in dramatic fashion this week. Uh, Cliff Lee, who I love to look is great. Pitched a complete game, only two hits against the Bo Sox. His third straight shutout, Jim. Uh, how about Cliff Lee? We talked about last year being the year of the pitcher for MLB. Uh, I don't know, Cliff Lee, Halliday's doing amazing. Uh, I wonder if it's another year of the pitcher this year. Yeah, it's funny you mention those two because they're teammates on the team of the pitcher, the yes. Philadelphia Phillies. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Halliday pitched a complete game against uh, the um, in Toronto against uh, the yeah. you know at the Blue Jays and he, it was absolutely amazing there too. Yeah, the uh, the Jays ended Cliff Lee's shutout streak, yeah, though, yeah. but that's but that's okay, you know. Yeah, exactly. You don't want it to go too long. <laughs> that's right. On the bad side, Jeff, you can add Ricky Vaughn to the list of MLB players that were on steroids back in the uh -huh. day. The name doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> well, that's probably because Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn was a fictional that's character right. from a movie called Major that's League, right. played by who else but Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. He, he told Sports Illustrated this past week that he took steroids during the movie to get his fastball up to 85 miles an hour from down at 79. Come on. A man. blistering what? 85 miles an hour. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs> he well, had to make it look baseball? right. Oh, I'll just take steroids. That guy, you know, at that time of the, uh, you know, when Charlie Sheen was huge during Major League, that was the least of what he was doing was the steroids, I'm yeah. sure. So, that best line from that movie, just a bit outside. Just a bit outside. Uh, again, on the bad side, Matthew Halsizer has pulled out of the running to become the new owner of the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, that means the NHL will more, more than likely start the 2011-2012 season as the owners of the team again. How ridiculous is this getting in Phoenix, Jim? Uh, you know how they gave... Uh, Winnipeg, the NHL logo. Yes. At the draft. Why don't they just do it to, to Phoenix? No right? kidding. Like, they can wear the black and white NHL jerseys the whole season. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's like, completely ridiculous. Sell, sell the team. Yeah, sell the team. How, how can it be so hard? Move it to Quebec City. Sell the well, team. Well, at, at what point do you say, okay, we're we're fed up with this garbage? And Glendale's taking care of some of the money, but yeah. they paid twenty five million this year. The team lost thirty seven. The NHL should be saying, okay, well. I mean, I don't know, maybe for you and me, Jeff, a couple million here and there is not that much. But for, you know, something like the NHL. Maybe maybe $12 million is a big deal. I just don't know how they can be, like, happy with losing money. No, I don't year. understand either. And finally, on the bad side, yes. let's go with Christine Sinclair. Poor Christine Japan. Sinclair. The poor girl just couldn't catch a break last no. week. Broke her nose, getting an elbow in the face. Finished the game, scored a beautiful goal. The next game, she's wearing a little mask. Yeah. That she didn't want to wear. Ball off the mask, cut herself open, and of course Canada lost both those games. He got whooped for nothing by France. But yeah. oh man, you break your nose, you put on the mask, and then you get a gash over your eye because the ball hits you in the mask. You want to talk That's about nice. breaking things, heartbreaking. That girl too, Christine Sinclair, she didn't look sad. She looked pissed off. Like she looked angry too with all the whole thing, eh? And oh, you know yeah. that girl's a competitor and just couldn't catch a break. Well, a broken nose. Oh, there it is. Hey, uh, we're gonna move on to quick hits real quick here. Back to the NHL free agency for a moment. The Rangers buy out Chris Drury, who seems to have a case of the <coughs> Chichus uh, going <laughs> on. Is he worth a risk taking? Uh, it, it's a tough one because good timing. Maybe yeah. on a one-year deal. Maybe on a one-year deal. Yep. 
I like it. I like it. Uh, did you watch that Eskimos game, uh, Jim? I Just work the Rough Riders? Fantastic. That is what I like to see. First game out of it, they were pumped. Uh, exactly. Our boy Kabongo would, looked incredible. Yes, he did. Ricky Ray looked like Ricky his Ray. old self, too. That was great. Absolutely. Uh, listen, guys, this is our 15 Minutes of Fame up for this week. You can join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 Minutes of Fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.